Hello everyone and welcome to the Spring Recap Edition of Around the GNAC. I'm Doug Chin. Finals are done and most of our student athletes have gone home for the summer. But before we close the book on the 2012-2013 school year, let's take a quick look back at the spring season. Riviera's men's volleyball has become almost synonymous with the term GNAC champion. The Raiders have won every title since the conference started sponsoring the championship in 2008. They hosted a manual in the conference final this year. After cruising to an easy 25-13 win in the first set, the Raiders found themselves down by a sizable margin in the second. After a long rally, Zach Whittemore made it 10-6 Saints with this smash. They would open up their lead to eight. The reigning champs were able to battle back to tie the game at 23. It would be too little too late though, as the visitors held on for a 26-24 win. The third set was the most evenly matched, with both teams struggling to extend their lead more than two. In the end though, Riv captured the set with the second chance hit by outside hitter Chris Markison that is blocked out of bounds. The fourth set was much like the second. Manuel got out to a sizable lead. This huge tandem block by Ryan Kessler and Wyatt Cooper made it 15-10. But once again, the Raiders battled back, and this time they finished the job. Revere's lone senior Steve Vicenton records the service ace on match point. For his efforts in the tournament, Vicenton was named MVP. By claiming the GNAC crown, the Raiders received an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. They made it all the way to the Final Four, making them the GNAC team to advance farthest in the national championship this year. While Riviera has grown accustomed to winning, head coach Craig Kolick knows that championships are not easy to come by. You know, the last couple of years have been hotter and hotter. I think the GNAC teams are getting stronger, uh, as shown by tonight. Emmanuel really has uh, improved so much, even just from this season. In men's lacrosse, we had a first-time champion, the top-seeded Norwich Cadets, were able to knock off the two-time reigning champion Mount Ida Mustangs in a thrilling 9-7 match. Norwich was able to jump out to a 3-1 lead in the opening quarter, and they would never trail in the game. But that doesn't mean Mount Ida didn't put up a fight. With just over five minutes left in the fourth quarter, and the Mustangs trailing 8-5, Phil Pischel and Nick Yacuzzi scored to bring Mount Ida within one. But with 1.20 left on the clock, Norwich junior Ian Thomas was able to net his third goal of the game and seal the win for the Cadets. Norwich goalie Mark Paradiso made 10 saves in the title match and earned the tournament MVP. If you thought the men's final was exciting, wait until I tell you what happened in the women's lacrosse championship. The GNAC title came down to the LaSalle Lasers and the Simmons Sharks. We were there to capture the highlights. We're going to pick this game up in the final five minutes because that's when things got really interesting. Here with the Lasers up two, junior Ashley Pichulis finds Brittany Wario sweeping around the net. Wario puts home her fourth goal of the game, but it wouldn't be her last. Simmons would then go on a run. After a free position goal made at 14-12, the Sharks had a chance to attack again. Rachel Wallace was able to corral this pass and cut between two defenders to bring her team within one. She had five goals on the afternoon. Now with just over a minute remaining, Simmons swarmed the laser net once again. The ball ends up in Kaylee Warnock's stick, and she's able to tie it up with 48 seconds left. But the celebration wouldn't last long. With time running down, senior Ashley Slattery finds Caitlin Breacher just outside the 8 meter arc. She spots Warrior cutting to the net again, and the Bolton Mass native is able to put away the eventual game winning goal with just 22 seconds remaining. It was the first ever GNAC title for the Lasers women's lacrosse team after a few trips to the final. Tournament MVP Ashley Slattery talked about what it meant to finally get over that hurdle. It's, it's relieving, honestly. We've been working so hard for the past like four years. Even my freshman year when we didn't make it, that was our goal. It's always been our goal. And to finally achieve it, it's, like, it's a really awesome accomplishment. The GNAX internship program offers a great opportunity for those looking to start their careers in college athletics. This year, one of our interns, Zachary Bright, became the go-to guy for the conference's baseball news. He's here with us to recap this year's championship. Thanks, Doug. The 2013 GNAC baseball season was one of the most competitive ones in recent memory. The fifth and sixth seeds of the tournament were decided by a three-way tiebreaker, and Johnson Wales University, selected to finish fourth in the preseason coaches poll, surprised everyone when they won their first GNAC regular season title since 2004. In the end, though, the GNAC championship at Historic Holman Stadium came down to the two teams that we thought were going to be there all along. 
the Monks of St. Joseph's College, and the Rams of Suffolk University. The Monks, the number two seed, advanced to the championship game through the winner's bracket. After an 8-6 opening round win over Suffolk, St. Joe's played top seed Johnson Wales University. The 2013 GNAC Pitcher of the Year Tyler Laverriere got the start for St. Joe's and gave up one earned run on just two hits over seven innings, allowing the Monks to cruise to a 7-2 victory. For Suffolk, the road to the GNAC Championship was much more trying. With their opening round loss to St. Joe's, the Rams needed two wins in the loser's bracket just to make the final. In survival mode, Suffolk came out and beat LaSalle College in the elimination game 5-2. Then, in the nightcap against JWU, the Rams continued their run on the back of left-handed pitcher Jonathan Richard. An eventual all-tournament selectee, Richard had a career day for Suffolk, giving up just one earned run in a complete game 4-2 victory that put the Rams back in the finals. On Championship Sunday, the Rams came out in Game 1 with all guns blazing, knowing they'd need two wins to take it all. Their offense, fueled by GNAC Player of the Year Mike Cunningham, scored seven runs in the first five innings, and sophomore Josh Desai struck out 11 in a complete game 7-2 victory to force a decisive fifth game at home. In the finale, it appeared that once again Suffolk's offense had staked its pitching staff a lead that couldn't be squandered. Entering the ninth, the Rams held a 6-3 advantage which shut down closer Frank Tierney on the bump. However, the Monks and skipper Will Sanborn had other plans as they scored three runs in the bottom half of the inning to send the game into extras. After shutting down the Rams in the top of the tenth, the Monks then wasted no time in their next at bat, with Joe Coyne driving in Sam Butts with a single up the middle to win the GNAC championship. Senior Chad Rafferty, the game's winning pitcher, was ultimately named tournament MVP and the victory marked the fourth consecutive title for the boys from Maine. Thanks, Zachary. The Monks also had some success on the softball diamond as they ended up behind the GNAC Champions banner for the third straight year. The Monks advanced all the way through the tournament in the winner's bracket, which meant Suffolk would need to beat them twice to take the crown. St. Joe's must have been happy with the way the game started. The first seven Monks to bat all reached base and they all scored. They would push across eight runs in the first and it turns out that was seven more than they would need. Kayla Vanna was dominant in the circle, pitching a four-hit shutout. For the tournament, she pitched 18 and a third scoreless innings and fanned 12. She was named the tournament's most valuable player. The GNAC and its member schools are always looking for ways to get involved in the community. Well, many of them get involved in charities. Earlier this spring, Suffolk hosted Simmons in a softball doubleheader. They used this opportunity to partner with Coaches vs. Cancer to add a charitable aspect to the competition. <laughs> Athletes battle against each other on the field all year long, but they understand that their games can't compare to those challenges some people have to deal with in their everyday lives. When Suffolk softball coach Jackie Davis was approached by Coaches vs. Cancer to host an event, she knew it was a great opportunity to help those who have to struggle with the disease. We do try to do a lot of, of work with uh, different cancer organizations and I've personally never been a part of a softball game dedicated to one a lot of people do it I always wanted to so it was just a great opportunity when coach Davis reached out to Simmons to join them for the event it was a no-brainer they decided to focus on raising breast cancer awareness the games took on a more personal tone as each team dedicated the performance to someone who was affected by the disease we personally uh, did it in memory of Carol Maggio, who was uh, who did the, uh, I'm sorry, ran the athletic office for 18 years. Uh, we lost her. It was a year ago on Christmas. Breast cancer really touched our team um, at a very close level last year. We were in spring training, and our catcher's mom found out that she had breast cancer while we were in Florida. Um, so we really rallied around her, um, and we learned a lot from her. As part of the event, Carol Maggio's granddaughter, Alexis, and Debbie Luongo, the mother of Simmons catcher Tori Luongo, each threw out ceremonial first pitches with specially ordered pink softballs. To raise money, the school sold cups that donors could decorate in tribute to someone they knew, and they also had a bake no sale where treats were offered in exchange for a donation to the buyer's choice. The Coaches vs. Cancer campaign started in 1993 as a collaboration between the American Cancer Society and the National Association of Basketball Coaches. Since then, it has expanded to include all sports at both the high school and collegiate level. Coach Davis said she would like to do another event in the future and already has plans to make it bigger and better next year. We'll be looking forward to it.
<laughs> GNAC schools have worked with coaches versus cancer in the past. Our basketball teams have participated in the Suits and Sneakers Challenge in which coaches and their staff are encouraged to wear sneakers with their game attire. St. Joe's Maine Softball and Simmons Lacrosse also had coaches versus cancer events this spring. Every year, the Great Northeast Athletic Conference recognizes the programs with the most across-the-board excellence by awarding them the Commissioner's Cup. This year, Johnson & Wales and Norwich shared the trophy on the men's side, while Simmons claimed the prize for the women. The conference also recognized the programs who ex exhibited the highest level of sportsmanship with the Institutional Sportsmanship Awards. This year's recipients are LaSalle and Anna Maria for their men's and women's programs, respectively. And that will conclude this season of Around the GNAC. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter to get all the latest updates for the GNAC news. Also be sure to visit thegnac.com. Thanks to all the GNAC SIDs for their help with these stories. Thanks to Zachary Bright for his great coverage covering GNAC baseball. And thanks to Emmanuel College for hosting our shoot once again. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Doug Chin, and have a nice summer.